Hello everyone. Welcome to the playlist of High Voltage Engineering. In this session, I will be discussing about the testing of transformers. First and foremost thing, let us understand why transformer testings are required. As you know that transformer is very much costly. If you talk about distribution transformers, it will be operating 24 hours per day. So that we need to take care about transformer insulation. Normally, we are going to use oil as a transformer insulator. It has dual purpose. It will act as cooling as well as insulation. So normally, we are going to use mineral oil as a transformer insulation. So we have to test the insulation in a proper manner, such a way that we need to reduce the fault as well as we have to overcome uh, the problem with the excess of temperature. Great care has to be taken for the particular transformers. Otherwise, definitely it will affect the perf overall performance. Moreover, transformer will be getting damaged because if you provide poor insulation, if you provide poor quality of insulation, definitely transformer will be getting spoiled. Moreover, transfer, transient over voltage, that is one of the major phenomenon. Definitely that will be spoiling the quality, the quality and level of the insulation that we have to take care. In this context, I'll be mainly discussing about insulation testing. There are different type of testing like performance testing such as OCSE test. Then you can go for subness test that I am not covering in this session. I will be concentrating only insulation testing or dielectric testing. So let us understand what are the different type of insulation testing or dielectric testing which are applicable for transformers. Let us have a brief checklist regarding insulation testing. First one is preliminary testing. The main purpose of doing preliminary testing is to check core insulation level. Whether the core insulation level is adequate or not, that's the main purpose of doing preliminary testing. Regarding routine test, the main purpose of conducting routine test is to check the insulation resistance of the transformer winding is proper or not. That's the main purpose of conducting routine test. If I talk about type test, this is mainly used for temperature rise. Regarding dielectric test, then over voltage test. So there are two types of over voltage test, induced over voltage test and partial discharge test. Later on, we'll be discussing impulse testing of transformers. These are the main type of testing which you are going to cover in this session. Let me move on to preliminary testing. What is the importance of preliminary testing? Let us have a brief discussion. So. Once the core is getting assembled in the transformer, you need to apply 2 kV of test voltage. Why you are applying 2 kV of insulation voltage? Test voltage why you are going to apply? You need to make sure that the insulation between clamp plates, core bolts and core part is adequate or not. Whether the sufficient level of insulation has been provided or not. So if any changes observed, that means the quality of those insulation are not proper. Suppose after applying 2 kV, if you found any abnormality, definitely you will come to know that the insulation level which you are going to provide in the transformer part that is not sufficient. So let us figure out different segments such as clamp plate. Uh, this will be the lamination block. We are going to provide the lamination in the core. Why? Because we need to reduce eddy current loss. That's why we are going to provide the uh, lamination. Uh, similarly, oil duct is also available. So everywhere you need to check that the, the insulation which you are going to provide that is sufficient or not. So that is why you need to generate a test voltage and you will be directly applying over them. If the insulation is not sufficient, definitely some changes will be happened over them. So this, are, this is known as preliminary testing. I would like to discuss about routine test. What is the importance of routine test? The main purpose of doing routine test is to check the winding resistance, insulation resistance of the transformer. We need to check what is the winding insulation resistance of the transformer. That's the main purpose. So measurement can be done with the help of one device that is known as MEGAR. So transformer winding insulation resistance can be used with the help of one device that is known as MEGAR. There are two types of MEGARs which are available. Number one, hand operated or electrically driven DC generated type MEGAR. This is one of the conventional type MEGAR. Nowadays, it is replaced with a battery source with the electronic circuit. That means battery operated mega circuit. There are two types of uh, MEGAs are available. Whichever you convenient, you can go for that. The insulation test reveals the condition of insulation inside the transformer. We can able to measure by using the leads. There will be connecting. 
either you can go for hand operated type mager or battery powered mager whichever you convenient you can use the insulation resistance values are affected by the following factors number 1 temperature humidity and presence of dirt or moisture so these are the different factors which are affecting the insulation so we have to compare the standard value of insulation resistance it should not be less than that particular minimum value if you found the value of insulation resistance is very less you can understand that some problem will be occurred in particular winding okay you need to replace the winding insulation that conclusion you can make out so you have to measure the insulation with the help of winding insulation with the help of one device that is known as mager and compare with the standard value of uh, insulation resistance as you can see this is the electronic type mager okay battery powered type mager we have the wire leads we will be directly inserting to the transformer winding and uh, we will be getting the reading over the in terms of uh, mega ohm so this type of mager nowadays we are um, nowadays we are going to use this kind of electronic type mager for measurement of insulation resistance so this is actually the uh, hand operated type mager you can see the operating handle okay it will be driven by a generator Uh, then uh, we have the connecting leads this has to be directly inserted in the winding section and you are going to measure the winding insulation resistance direct analog display will be available here we are having a digital display where uh, we'll be getting analog display over the so these are the different diagrams related to uh, megas i would like to discuss about the third type of testing that is known as type test the main purpose of conducting type test is to measure the temperature rise whether the temperature rise is normal or abnormal that is the main purpose of conducting the test to confirm that under normal conditions the temperature rise of the windings and the oil will not exceed the specified limit that's the main purpose so temperature rises are measured above the temperature of the cooling air it is applicable for air cooled type transformer regarding the water cooled transformer in water cooled transformer the temperature rise measured above the inlet water temperature so it is applicable only for water cooled type uh, transformer so based on the cooling type you can cooling arrangement you can classify the temperature transformer such as air cooled transformer uh, water cooled type transformer air blast type transformer there are many more okay so we need to ensure that the temperature rise should be should not be abnormal okay if it is getting up uh, back, rapid changes then we will say that uh, the, there is abnormal temperature is rise is taken place in the transformer uh, so that particular insulation is not sufficient so we need to take uh, our hour by reading hourly reading has to be taken so you can go for thermometer so by connecting the thermometer you can able to get the readings then reading has to be compared okay so we are to take the temperature at the inlet and outlet of the cool outlet of the cooler ba bank is also taken per hour and mean oil temperature should be calculated so ambient temperature should be ambient temperature in the sense atmospheric temperature has to be measured so we need to make sure that every consecutive hour the temperature rise should not be taken place more than 1 degree celsius per hour if the temperature rise is more than 1 degree celsius per hour definitely we will say that the transformer oil is not sufficient that particular quality is worst you need to replace that particular quality okay that's a conclusion the last reading is taken for the determination of the final oil temperature rise okay so these are the procedure for conducting the temperature rise test it is also known as type test i would like to discuss about dielectric test why we are conducting dielectric test why conducting dielectric test means to verify the power frequency with stand strength of the winding insulation that's the main purpose of conducting dielectric test actually we need to produce a test ac voltage that has to be applied for 1 minute or you can call 60 seconds to the transformer winding uh, that winding is provided with a suitable insulation make sure that no drop or sudden drop should not be taken place the test shall be successful if there is no collapse in the test voltage if there is any collapse definitely we will say that the winding insulation with the suitable grading is not sufficient you need to replace that particular transformer uh, insulation at the earliest so that's a conclusion regarding dielectric test so definitely we require a standard test voltage that has to be applied for 1 minute now i would like to discuss about over voltage test there are two procedures first one is known as induced over voltage test and second one is known as partial discharge test first let me discuss about induced over voltage test let us understand what are the procedures which are comes under induced over 
why we are conducting induced over voltage test to verify the power frequency which stand strength along with the winding under test between its faces and to the earth and other winding this test checks the inter turn insulation to ensure or to verify the inter turn insulation of the winding we are going to conduct uh, the induced over voltage test the test voltage should be applied such a way that it should be twice it should be double double voltage twice voltage should be applied okay suppose if the rated voltage is 200 you need to apply 400 voltage that means 2 into 200 means 400 volt that has to be applied over the winding and the frequency also can be changed it can be varied from 100 to 400 hertz okay higher than that of the normal value the insulation instant strength can be checked by using induced over voltage testing for those conditions your winding insulation should not show any disturbance if it is found in a disturbance definitely the quality of the inter turn insulation is not sufficient that has to be replaced as early as possible so that is regarding induced over voltage test do remember these two conditions the voltage should be twice and uh, the frequency can be varied from 100 to 400 hertz these are the two conditions which are applicable for induced over voltage test for two conditions uh, no changes should be happened over the particular insulation i would like to discuss about the partial discharge test so partial discharge test why we are conducting partial discharge test in the sense to calculate the discharge magnitude and the radio interference level these are the main purpose of conducting the partial discharge test you can go for any methods there is no standard rule or standard norms the winding insulation can be tested by using any one of the discharge detection method you can go for straight detectors method or you can go for balanced detector method or or else you can go for narrow and wide band frequency method any method can be adopted so as your wish similarly location of fault or void is sometimes done by using traveling wave methods also or else you can go for scanning method also like your cable whatever you have done in the cable you can watch my previous video how to conduct the uh, cable insulation testing i have explained uh, systematically so you can refer that in that you can you, you might have familiar about traveling wave technique so you can apply the same thing for your uh, winding insulation also fan power winding insulation also so there is no method standard as i informed bit early that there won't be any standard method so whichever the method is convenient and uh, your comfortness you can go for that under the application of power frequency voltage the discharge magnitude greater than 10 to the power 4 pico coulomb are considered as a too severe if you get the readings i mean after comparing with the waveforms if i talk about discharge detection method you will be comparing different waveforms if you found the discharge magnitude more than 10 to the power 4 pico coulomb obviously there is a severe fault which is happening in your which will be taken place in your transformer winding so immediately you have to replace the transformer winding that's a conclusion so you have to measure the discharge in terms of coulomb so normally we measure pico coulombs that i already explained at the time uh, how to measure the partial discharge in case of transformer you should, the winding uh, that a winding insulation uh, should be such a way that the discharge magnitude will be less than that particular standard value suppose if i am getting less than 10 to the power 4 pico coulomb you are winding insulation that is in a safer mode if it is exceeding more than 10 to the power pico coulomb uh, there is a something uh, severity which is happening in your transformer winding insulation that's a conclusion which you can make out from partial discharge test now i would like to discuss about the sixth procedure that is known as impulse testing that's one of the most important te testing which is concerning for uh, transformer insulation let us discuss how to conduct impulse testing as you know that during lightning and thundering bulk amount of uh, transient voltage that will be taken place and that will be directly affecting the insulation of different electrical appliances such as circuit breaker uh, similarly isolators then transformers etc especially transformer is the severe uh, part which will be affecting this kind of transient over voltage so all of most of the transformers that will be uh, lie, uh, locating at the corridor especially in the substation yard most of the transformer will be locating so it is very uh, essential to conduct the impulse testing so during lightning and thundering, uh, the transient voltage can uh, sustain whether transformer insulation can sustain those kind of impulse voltage or not. That's the main purpose of conducting impulse testing. So impulse uh, testing, in order to conduct impulse testing, we require impulse generator. That is must. The lightning stroke makes direct contact with the phase conductor and produces the voltage excess of impulse voltage. That is true, which is happening. The purpose of conducting the impulse 
uh, actually the main purpose of conducting the impulse test is to determine the ability of the insulation of transformers to withstand transient over voltage during lightning and thundering bulk amount of transient voltage that will be happening or that will be generating during lightning and thundering at that time what is the response of your transformer insulation that we have to ensure okay so your transformer insulation for example transformer oil has to be designed such a way that it should overcome uh, during lightning and thundering so that's a peculiarity let us continue so we need to generate different type of impulse waveform for example front of wave then chopped wave and full wave this kind these are the different waveforms by adjusting the wave front and wave tail resistance you can able to generate this kind of waveforms so with the help of these waveforms uh, you can able to test the transformer insulation during lightning and thundering this kind of waveforms will be obviously generating you can see a graph that means voltage versus lightning impulse wave shapes uh, that means uh, voltage versus time you can see the graph these are the different waveforms different type of impulse waveform uh, if you observe the wavefront time and wave tail time of those kind of waveforms that will be totally different if i talk about the front of waveform the peak value is very much high it will be directly affecting uh, the transformer insulation so these kind of waveforms can be uh, generated for the testing purpose with the help of impulse generator by adjusting the wavefront and the wave tail resistance definitely you can able to generate these kind of waveforms that has to be directly applied over the uh, transformer insulation then you will be observing any changes are happening what about the wave shape whether are you getting the pure waveforms if there any sudden collapse of the voltage that you are going to observe that means the first one is full wave uh, the wave front and wave tail time has been mentioned in terms of microsecond this will be the chopped waveform second one third one will be front of waves these are the different type of uh, impulse waveform that you can create with the help of impulse generator that has to be directly applied over or transformer insulation then making sure that nothing is going to happen in the transformer insulation if you found any sudden voltage drop or dip immediately you will come to know that there is a problem in the transformer insulation the transformer insulation cannot able to withstand during lightning and thunder that's a conclusion which you can make out design a basic impulse generator circuit for generating the impulse waveform like uh, chopped waveform full wave definitely we require a impulse generator so i already explained the importance of impulse generator how to design impulse generator those concept i already discussed in the second module you can refer my previous video so let us consider one block diagram regarding uh, the impulse testing okay the first segment belongs to impulse generator so this is your charging and discharging capacitor and this is belong to your spark gap and these are the wave front and wave tail resistor all together we can call this is one of the impulse generator so by designing the value i can able to create definite amount of voltage in order to measure how much impulse voltage you have generated you can go for one voltage divider this type of voltage divider is known as capacitive type voltage divider so especially if you want to measure impulse waveform you can go for capacitive type voltage divider similarly the recording facility is also available okay you can observe the recording facility so here what you are going to do is you will be applying Uh, the output of voltage divider across the transformer winding these are the different type of transformer winding where the insulation has been kept over there so we are we are not directly using the insulation we will be using the equivalent circuit why equivalent circuit of the suitable winding we will be using so it's not a direct test then what you are going to do is you will be generating the impulse waveform with the help of impulse generator and uh, these are the measurement okay you can take the waveforms you can collect the waveform different devices will be used here the output will be directly applied across the winding of the transformer so you are going to observe the these are the waveforms so the applied voltage and output voltage you are going to measure and you are going to compare the applied voltage and output voltage and uh, you will be making making conclusion that is there any changes in the output voltage you will be checking the correctness of the output voltage is there any severe changes which are happening in the output voltage that you are going to observe based on that you are making a conclusion so that is regarding the impulse testing of transformer so similarly you will be keeping the the other windings also and uh, doing the same procedure and you will be having different waveforms i'll be showing the waveforms based on the waveforms you will come to know that whether the uh, insulation is having certain problem are you facing a problem related to your transformer we can able to identify whether your uh, transformer insulation has to be replaced or not that you can make a conclusion so let me show the waveforms as you can see these are the different waveforms so if you found this kind of waveforms i will come to know that this is the failure from the line lead to ground through the transformer oil that's a failure that means uh, this is our output voltage versus time so if you see this kind of waveforms definitely we will come to know that there is a problem in the transformer oil that is 
the failure from line to low line to lead to ground through the oil so that's the main problem similar let us consider some other example so there if you found these kind of waveforms you can observe these kind of waveforms so fw stand for full wave full impulse wave rfw stand for reduced to full wave if you are getting these kind of waveforms okay these kind of waveforms definitely will conclude that almost 8.5 percent of the winding insulation has been failed okay so definitely will be getting the change of waveforms regarding if you compare full wave and reduce to full wave there is a too much of deviation you can observe that means uh, moreover voltage is drooping down what does it mean voltage is drooping down means definitely there will be a uh, conduction if uh, during, whenever switch is on what is going to happen voltage becomes zero voltage is moving towards zero just like a short circuit that means your insulation part is becoming a conductive section so that is why voltage is suddenly drooping okay so that is why if you look at the waveforms we will come to know that is there any uh, deviation which will be happening in your transformer oil okay these are the basic inference we can make out from the impulse testing of transformer so if you observe this kind of waveform definitely will come to know that there is a problem in the transformer oil so first one is actually failure from the line lead to ground through the oil so your transformer oil has to be replaced similarly regarding the winding insulation there, if there is a problem in the winding insulation you will be getting the your full wave will be drooping down so that's a peculiarity so you can apply uh, with the help of reduced to full wave or full wave whatever it may be so the, if you found any droop here you can see a sudden droop you can observe sudden droop is taken place that means voltage is drooping down that means there is a short circuit so this winding diagram that will be really helpful for conducting the testing this is the equal circuit of transformer winding this is required for conducting the impulse testing okay we have to design one equal circuit uh, for the uh, transformer winding to conduct the impulse testing that is required where l stand for series inductance c stand for uh, series capacitance and cg stand for uh, shunt capacitance to the ground okay these are the equal circuit of the transformer winding for the impulse generator okay uh, not for the impulse generator especially impulse generators are using for conducting the test so this is mainly for equal circuit of the transformer winding there are different procedures for conducting impulse testing however we require i already informed that uh, impulse generator is mandatory for conducting impulse testing so let us understand the various procedure you can see the checklist of various procedures for uh, impulse testing of transformer number 1 general observation number 2 voltage oscillogram method number 3 neutral current method and finally transfer surge current method for all the method we require uh, impulse generator so let us understand what is the peculiarity of uh, general observation how you are making some certain conclusion based on the general observations suppose you are going to observe the transformer tank okay where you are going to store the transformer oil if you found any bubble like structure or any noises which are observing the transformer tank definitely there is a problem with the transformer insulation i will be doing one uh, test based on the transformer oil so i will be demonstrating there after after this lecture video i will be demonstrating so next next session probably next session i will be demonstrating uh, how to check the transformer insulation level that i will be discussing later on uh, here uh, we can say that if you found any abnormality in the transformer tank definitely some kind of bubbles or some kind of noises or some kind of disturbance if you observe smoke or some other disturbance if you found definitely we will say that uh, there is a problem in the transformer oil anyway uh, this will come to know when you are conducting the impulse testing this is the first observation that is known as general observations moving on to second procedure that is known as voltage oscillogram method this is for actually measurement of the this will be done after measuring the voltage shapes voltage waveform shape will be measured a fault or failure appears a partial or complete collapse of the applied voltage waveform you will be checking the input and output waveforms anyway input to waveform will be obtained from the impulse generator output to waveform you will be getting across the transformer winding so we are going to compare the input and output waveforms so if there is any failure definitely voltage collapse or vo sudden voltage drop will be taken place but uh, the sensitivity and accuracy of the method is somewhat poor okay that is the, the anyway this method can be adopted for insulation testing so this method is known as voltage oscillogram method this is a part of insulation testing of transformer i'll be moving on to neutral current method so here this is also another method for uh, measuring the waveforms waveform has to be measured so based on the waveform we can able to identify whether the fault is uh, taken place or not let us discuss the neutral uh, current method in detail 
As far as neutral current method concerned, a record of the impulse current flowing through a resistive shunt between the neutral and ground point will be considered for detecting the fault. So you'll be checking the waveforms and you'll come to know that whether the fault is taken place or not. So that method is known as neutral current method. Moving on to transfer surge current method, it is similar to neutral current method. In this method, the voltage across the resistive shunt connected between the low voltage winding and the ground is used for the fault allocation or fault detection. So both are almost similar. You will be checking the waveforms and you will be finding out the certain position and measuring the current and voltage. In the first case, we are going to measure the current and where the second case, we are going to check the voltage. That means uh, the resistive shunt connected between the low voltage winding and the ground. This part you have to remember. Okay, that's why I, I mentioned separately. So this is known as transfer such current method. These are the different procedure which are comes under uh, impulse testing of transformers. In this session, I have discussed the importance of transformer insulation testing. Why we are going to conduct the transformer insulation testing. So what are the different methods of conducting uh, transformer insulation testing? As you can observe, so these are the different varieties of insulation testing which are applicable for the transformer like a preliminary testing, routine test, type test, dielectric test, over voltage test and finally we have studied the certain procedure for impulse testing. So these are the popular tests which are applicable for testing the transformer dielectrics or transformer insulation section. So I could explain uh, the summary of individual tests and the basic procedures. I hope you understood the session. If you are having any queries, you can put up in the comment box. Moreover, if you need the presentation slides, you can request and I'll, uh, if you provide the mail ID, definitely I'll revert, I'll revert back. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this channel useful, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.